Susan joined a fitness uh, class at a gym. In her workout, she incorporates a sit-up routine, and it's a progressive sit-up routine. It says on the sixth day of the program, she does 11 sit-ups, and on the 15th day, she has 29. So what's happening is every day that she goes into the gym, she does sit-ups, but she does more sit-ups each day. And you're told that the number of sit-ups that she does day by day forms an arithmetic sequence. And I talked about this in the video that I made, and I've talked about it numerous times here. I think, I think this really helps you get a better handle on what N is and TN is, because very often you can confuse the two. N here is really the day number of the routine, and TN is the number of sit-ups. And we don't know how many she does on the first day, or the second day, or the third day, or the fourth day, or the fifth day, or the s but we do know on the sixth day, it's 11 sit-ups. Which, you know, you might say that's not very ambitious, but people have different physical abilities. And then we don't know about the seventh, or eighth, or ninth, but we do know eventually we get to the 15th day, and she does 29 sit-ups. And the question is, Tell me about this program. How many sit-ups does she do on each day? What's the total number of sit-ups maybe? All of this stuff. How many sit-ups does she increase her routine by every day? And what I would put to you is that when it boils down to it, we've turned it into a math problem. And the math problem is this, that the sixth term of this sequence is 11, there's a whole bunch more terms, and then the 15th term is 29. And there are a couple of ways we can solve this problem. So forget about what the question is specifically. I want to go back to something I've highlighted before for many of you, for the whole class, I think. Knowing T1 and knowing D cracks the case wide open. If you know the first term and you know the common difference, you can find anything. So I'm just taking that approach and then I'll look at what the question is asking us. Let's find those things. Yesterday we saw that you could do this by a system of equations, but that is overkill. The reason I taught you how to do it with a system of equations yesterday is to remind you how to work with a system of equations so that when we have to do things that way, you will be familiar with it or more familiar with it. What we're going to do here, now I'm going to draw this out and then challenge you not to have to draw it out every time, is the following. First term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, eighth term, ninth term, tenth term, eleventh term, twelfth term, thirteenth term, fourteenth term, look at that spacing, fifteenth term, which was 29. Okay. So what that means, if we go from the 6th to the 15th term, it means we are adding a common difference, a whole bunch of times. And I think you can see that the bigger the difference between the two terms' locations, the more of a pain this is, right? Because, I mean, if it were the sixth term and the millionth term, you're not going to draw out a whole bunch of those. But you could do it this way and then count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine common differences. And what that means, going back over to here, is that you would have to add to 11 nine common differences to get 29. But I had said I want to challenge you a little bit here because th this is fraught with bumps in the road that could cause you to make a mistake. You know, you're, you have to count a whole bunch of lines. You have to draw them out and keep track of them. There's a lot of little things you have to keep your eye on here. 
Can you determine that it's nine common differences by simply looking at the information in the question? And the answer is yes, because you go from the sixth term to the 15th term. And 15 minus 6 will give you 9. There, there's nine spaces, but not, not spaces between them. That's a wrong thing to say. There's nine little leaps that need to be made to go from the sixth term to the 15th term, because 15 minus 6 is 9. This is easy to solve now. You can subtract 9 from both sides and get, uh, sorry, you can subtract 11 from both sides and get 9d equals 18 which means the common difference is 2. And I'll show you an algebraic way to finish the problem now. But you know, sometimes if you're just doing a multiple choice question or a numerical response question, or maybe a question like on the quiz yesterday, you can get lost in the algebra when all you have to really do is just go, well, if the common difference is 2, this is 9, this is 7, this is 5, this is 3, and this is 1. All right, so I don't know what we're asked to find yet. But it's very easy to figure out what the other terms are. If I take a look now at what it is we're asked to find, we are asked to find the general term. OK, so we need to know the first term and the common difference to write the general term. I have shown you that the first term is 1. Okay. The common difference is 2. So we can use our general term formula. To determine the general term. Which would be Tn equals 1. Plus n minus 1 times d, which is 2. I'm, I'm going to end it there for this part of the question. I'll leave it up to you. Everybody should be able to expand that out and simplify it. You're going to get 1 plus 2n minus 2, and you can add the 1 and the negative 2 together. We are also asked if the goal is, and this is a, maybe I guess I will finish A. If she wants to be able to do 100 sit-ups, on which day is that going to happen? Well, first of all, hmm. she's not going to actually do 100 sit-ups on any particular day. Because these numbers are all odd. On one day, she'll do 99. And on one day, she'll do 101. So what we're going to be doing really is saying the only way she can do 100 is if she does at least 100. I'm going to take this formula for Tn, which is 1 plus n minus 1 times 2. I am going to simplify this. And again, I'm not, I'm not meaning to just hand wave things away as if it's unimportant. But I think getting to there is pretty basic. You can do that. Yeah? OK. So the question is now. When do we hit 100? And I'm going to actually put 100 there, knowing that it's not going to happen on a day. And I'm going to put 100 in here equals 2n minus 1. If I add 1 to both sides here, I get 101 equals 2n. And then when I divide both sides by 2, I get 50. 0.5, I believe, but I don't know why that doesn't make sense to me. Is that right? OK. So, but there is no 50.5th day. And if she hits 100 mathematically at 50.5, that means at 50, she hasn't hit 100 yet. And at 51, she's gone over 100. So the logic here is the answer is going to be on the 51st day, she will do 100 sit-ups. She will actually do more than 100. She'll do 101. Because if you put 51 in here, you're going to get 101. 2 times 51 is 102, minus the 1 is 51. What else are we asked here? We are also asked, there we go, what assumptions did you make? Uh, 
is somebody talking right now? We didn't have to do C. Oh, you didn't have to do C. Okay. Please remember to raise your hand. It just, that, that's okay. You, it gets a while to get used to because I just, I just hear this ghostly voice and I don't know where it's coming from. You, you didn't have to do C. And I was going to say, the first thing out of my mouth was going to say, I hate these questions where it says, what assumptions did you make? The assumption you would make here is she's sticking to the pattern. I mean, I don't know what else you would assume. That, that the gym is still open? I don't know. It's kind of a silly question. Page. It's page, right? Yeah, it was question 10 on the, in the handout. In the handout. Okay. Does that happen to be your question as well? No. Okay. We'll come back to yours. So how many multiples of 12 are there? There's a lot going on here. Inclusive from 179 to 892. Now the word inclusive means including those numbers. Okay. So the first thing I would be interested in knowing is, is 12 a factor of 179? In other words, is 179 a multiple of 12? Is 892 a multiple of 12? And the only way really to do that is to figure out if 892 divides by 12 without decimal or remainder. And I'm suspicious that it does. It doesn't? Okay. okay. So we have to do, I, I want to solve this problem using a formula, but we have to do a little bit of sleuthing, a little bit of Sherlock Holmes work here. If I take 179, and I divide it by 12, 12 goes in 14.9 times. What that tells me is if I look at a number line here, and I have 179, which is 14.912s, the first multiple of 12 that will be after 179 will be whatever 15 times 12 is. Okay? So 15 times 12 gives me 180. I think. Okay. So the first multiple of 12 is 180. Now you see what I'm doing there? I'm turning it into an arithmetic sequence. And the reason is if 180 is the first multiple of 12, 192 will be the next multiple. One more 12. And if I add 12 to 180 to get 192, I add 12 to 192 to get the next multiple. So now what I can say is I have an arithmetic sequence with the first term of 180 and a common difference of 12. And again, this table is going to be helpful. There are other ways you could do this, and I will maybe show you a different way in a second. Now, on the other end of things, we have 892. And if I take 892 divided by 12, this is my sleuthing. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of research here. I get 74.3. So this number is 74.3 12s, which means the one that is a multiple of 12 just before that will be, I just forgot the number, 74 12s. Because this is 74.3 repeating, so this number here is 74 twelves. 888. Yes? So 888. So on the, on the one hand, when n is 1, tn is 180. And we don't know what value of n takes us to 888. But, and this logic, I, it is a strange form of logic and not everybody picks up on it right away. Would you agree that 888 is the last term in the sequence? That means if we find the value of n that gives us the last term, we will be finding how many terms there are. Because if n, for example, is 23, I don't, it probably is not, but I'm just, it's not even a guess. It's just a number popped into my head. 
If n is 23, we're saying the 23rd term is 888, but 888 is the last term. So it would be how many terms there are, which would be how many multiples there are. And since we know the first term and the common difference, it's very easy to set up a general term. It's t1 plus n minus 1 times d. So this is our general term formula. And essentially, we need to put 888 in for Tn and solve for n. Now, I'm going to you know, pull over, forget about sequences, just talk about math for a second. How many of you can appreciate that it's OK to just solve this equation from here? In other words, I can put the 888 in right now. And when I solve this, I look at this and I say I would subtract 180. I would not expand this out. I would subtract 180, I would divide by 12, and then I would add 1. Okay. How many of you, though, and, and this is maybe a safer bet. We do this first, and then you have a tidy little equation. I think even though it might seem like more work, for many people this is the way to go. So I get Tn equals 180 minus 12, I think is 168, but you can check my arithmetic there. Pretty sure. So if we take 168 and sub... Oh, we've got to put in the 888 first, right? We've got to put in the 888... And we can solve that. So whatever 888 minus 168 is, which is 720, 720 divided by 12 is, I want to say, 60. It is? So 60, there are 60 multiples of 12 in there. And this is a classic kind of exam question where um, probably be numerical response. Although we often use this phrase inclusive or this word inclusive, it's very rare that either of these are multiples. If they are, if the first number is a multiple, then that just becomes your T1. And if your last number is a multiple, that just becomes your last term. Okay, uh, one more question. Go ahead. 13. 13? In the handout? Okay. So this is like one of the examples that we did Basically, if you take the third term and subtract the second term, you have to get the same thing as taking the second term and subtracting the first term. All right? And those brackets are, well, they're crucial. They're, they're, not even, they're necessary, right? So you take the, se the third term, which is what's underlined here, and subtract the second term, which is what's underlined there. Then you take the second term, which is this, and you subtract the first term. Does that look OK, everyone? All right. I, I, listen, I, at some point, I have to say, at some point, I'm going to have to say, you should be able to handle what those minus in brackets means. So I'm not going to explain this every time, because as we get further and further into high school math, there's more of these little things you just need to keep track of. And if I explain them all in detail every time, we'd never get to the math 20. I do it this way. I say minus 3x and minus negative 1. And then we have, th hmm, that's weird. Um, minus 3x minus negative 1. So when you subtract a negative, it becomes positive. 
And then over here, I have 3x minus 1, and it's minus x, and it's minus 3. We in agreement there? Okay. In reality, if I'm being perfectly honest, I wouldn't have done that. I would have done what I think a lot of you do. 7x minus 3x is 4x. I would have jumped right to here. Negative 2 minus negative 1 is negative 1. But as I helped some of you yesterday, when, we, when you were trying to do it this way, many of you were making mistakes. So do this instead. And then over here, we have 3x minus x which is 2x, which you would get here. And negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. It's a matter now of just solving this equation. Subtracting 2x from both sides gives me 2x. Adding 1 to both sides gives me negative 3. Um, this is a case where I'm looking ahead and seeing I'm going to be getting a fraction, which is not necessarily wrong, but it's not usually what you get for answers in these types of questions. So the only way, I mean, I could look in the back and see if the answer is correct. But what I could do instead, well, first of all, honestly, if I were doing this, and I am, I would double check all my work right now. Because I am getting a fraction, which is you know, a little off-putting to me. It's like, what's going on here, a fraction? So I would look at the whole thing from the beginning, I have 3x minus 1 minus x plus 3. I have 7x minus 2 minus 3x minus 1. I should have in this line here 4x minus 1, and I do. I should have here 2x minus 4, and I do. That means 2x equals negative 3. It's fine. Okay. So I found x. Now I'm going to be a little bit lazy because I want to shave off as much time of this explanation as I can so we can get started today. I'm going to use my calculator. Um, by the way, negative 3 over 2 is negative 1.5. So I'm going to look at the top, and my first term would be negative 1.5 plus 3, 1.5. My second term would be 3 times negative 1.5 minus 1. My next term is negative 5.5. My final term would be 7 times negative 1.5 minus 2. And before I hit equals, I can see that to go from 1.5 to negative 5.5, I'm losing 6 on a number line. So I need to lose another 6. This better be negative 11, negative, uh, I'm losing 7. Hmm. Negative 1.5 plus 3. 3 times negative 1.5 minus 1. 7 times negative 1.5 minus 2. Am I wrong or is that, that not arithmetic? That's right. From 1.5, oh. From 1.5 to negative 5.5 is a decrease of 7, isn't it? And then I lose 7 again. All right, we're going to move on now. We've got a little bit of work to do today. This is on page 8 of your unit handout. And we're moving on to section 1.2 in your handout. And if you look at it very carefully... It says arithmetic series, not sequences, series. So there's a difference between a sequence and a series. They're related, but they're different. So we're going to define an arithmetic series. We're going to be finding sums of arithmetic series and doing some applications of arithmetic series. What an arithmetic series is, is the sum of the terms of an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so the word sequence is the list of the numbers. The word series means what do you get if you start adding up the numbers. So in a sequence, we use commas to separate terms, but in a series, we use plus. We also use this notation to talk about 
the sum of the terms. It's S sub N. And it's used to denote. All that means is it's used to describe the sum of the terms. And this right now is a little abstract without any specific numbers to talk about. And that's what we're going to look at in just a minute. So as an illustration, if I gave you 1, 3, 5, etc., you say it's arithmetic because there's a common difference, which happens to be 2. And you say it's a sequence because it's just a list of numbers. But if I say 1 plus 3 plus 5, it's arithmetic because each term goes up by 2. There's a common difference, but it's called a series. Right? So what does this mean? What does SN mean? Let's consider, and this is not in your notes. This is just for your perusal and thought of what's going on. I have 3 plus 7 plus 11 plus 15 plus et cetera. Can you just inspect that and make sure that it's arithmetic? Okay. Now, even though it's a series, I can still use things like T1, T2, T3, T4. If I said to you, what is T4 of this series, you would look at the fourth term. It's 15. Okay. However, Sn means something different. S1 is different than, S, than T1 in meaning. S2 means something different than T2. So to begin with here, if I were to ask you what is T1, T1 is 3. I, I don't think that's going to break your brain, is it? If I said S is S1, <laughs> S1, this, the language, the, the grammar here is tortured. S1 is the sum of the first term of the series. That doesn't sound right. But what it means is if you add up the first term, what do you get? Well, you get the first term. You get three. Right? There's nothing to add. If I say, what is T2? You look up here and you say, well, T2 is seven. That's pretty obvious. Now, what is S2? S2 is the sum of the first two terms. It's going to be 10. So what S is is a running total of everything, and what T is is just that particular term in that position. If I said, what is T3? Well, you look at the list, you say it's 11. What is S3? And I want to point out to you that S3, this is going to be an important thing if you can wrap your head around it. S3 can be found by adding... these three numbers, can't it? But since the first two terms add to give this, S3 can be found by taking S2 and adding T3. And, and just think very carefully about what I'm about to tell you. That should make sense because S3, S3 is the sum of the first three terms, S2 is the sum of the first two. So the difference between S2 and S3 is that third term. It's just that extra term. Regardless, you get 21. If I want to find S4, I guess I could take the sum of the first three terms and add the fourth term. That would take me to the sum of the first four, which would give me 36. Or if I wanted to, I could add all of these. But you're going to get 36. 36 plus the fifth term, which is 19, would be found finding the fifth sum. Do you get the idea there's just a couple of ways for you to determine S at a particular place? You could take S up to the place right before it and add the next term, or you could just add them all up from the beginning. But in the end, everybody, these numbers shouldn't be coming as a shock to you. So I hope that helps you understand the difference between T and S. All right, find S5 and S10 for this series. Well, you know what? I don't know that we'll actually find S10. We could do it. But S5 is pretty easy because we can simply look at this and say we're adding 3 each time, so this is 14. When I say we're adding 3 each time, that has nothing to do with a sum. I'm just saying that's the common difference. So S... 
would be equal to whatever the sum of this is, looking like 40, I think. And when I'm adding those numbers, I'm looking at the 2 and the 8 is 10. This is 5, so that's 15. This is 25. 25 and 15 gives me 40. If you wanted to find S10, I'm not going to waste our time and write all this down. You would have to take, let's see, 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 14. This is the sum of the first five. Let me back up. I didn't enter that right at all. Plus 11 plus 14. This is the sum of the first five. Is that correct now? Okay. And then I can go plus the sixth. What am I doing? Adding three each time. Seventh, eighth, ninth, Tenth. Would you agree it's very easy to make a mistake in doing this? I mean, there's, there's got to be a better way. I, we're not going to do it this way, in other words. But I'll double check. Plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. Have I got 10 terms? Yes. So S10 would be 155. But let's talk about how we can do it without doing all the grunt work, doing all the hard work. What are the, what's the sum of the first 100 terms of this sequence? This is actually a problem that was given to a mathematician uh, in elementary school a few hundred years ago, Leonard Euler. Um, and he was the kind of student who tended to not really pay attention because things were pretty easy for him and he got bored. And this was in elementary school. And his teacher gave him this problem to keep him busy. And he expected to keep this little child busy for some time, and he had it solved in under a minute. Okay. So he came up with a strategy, and the strategy is what I would like to discuss with you right now. I just have lines here so I can keep track of everything. What he is trying to find is S100. Would you agree? So this is what you're going to write. S100 equals... And you're going to write 1 plus 2 plus 3. And then you're going to put plus and put this dot, dot, dot. And then we can go plus. Let's go 98 plus 99 plus 100. This is what he needs to find, what we need to find. And what young Leonard realized is he could rewrite this thing that he's trying to find this way. And notice that I'm lining things up here. The 98 is lined up with the 3. The 99 is lined up with the 2. And he noticed something. If you add the 1 in the first line and the 100 below it, you get 101. And you get 101 all the time. You get 101 here. So I'm adding these two equations. You get 101 here. You get 101 here. These all add up to 101. The only problem is, and it's clear that this child is brilliant mathematically, is that's not the sum he wants to find. That is 2 multiplied by the sum he wants to find. Right? That's, that's twice the answer. The teacher wants to know what one of those lines adds up to. He's going to add up both lines to find the double the answer, I suppose. And what you can recognize here is that this is 100 terms, isn't it? Because it's 1 through 100 in the first line. And that means that this number on the right-hand side is 101 multiplied by 100, which you don't need a calculator for. And believe me, back when Euler did this, you didn't have a calculator. That's not how you did math back then. 
This is pretty easy. You just add two zeros to the 101. But this is 2 times S100. So 2 times S100 is equal to 10,100, which means S100 must be half of that. I just have to divide that number by 2. And again, using a little bit of, well, common sense, quite frankly, if I take 10,100 and I divide by 2, half of 10,000 is 5,000, half of 100 is 50, so you get 5,050. So the sum of the first 100 terms in this series is 5,050. And, you know, if you got some time on your hands later, maybe you want to take your calculator and go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus, I don't think anybody wants to do that, but you're going to get 5,050. But this illustrates an important strategy. I want you to notice that this 101 is the first term in the series plus the last term in the series. Did, did you have a question? No. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, I want you to notice that that 100 is the first term plus the last term. And I want you to know, pardon me, that 101 is the first term plus the last term. The 100 is how many terms? So really, what he recognizes, if you take the first term and the last term and add them together, and then multiply by how many terms there are, oh, and divide by 2, you will always get the sum. And you can do this with any arithmetic sequences. So the next question says, write a general formula for Sn. Well, the sum of n terms will be the number of terms divided by 2. We have to divide by 2 somewhere. And I'm just choosing to divide by 2 here. Multiplied by whatever the first term plus the last term is. Now, we're not done. That's not the formula. Okay, That is not the formula. The last term... is t sub n. And I'm going to ask everybody to think about why that's the case. If I'm finding the sum of n terms, why is t n the last term? And it's a weird question, I know that. In teaching this for decades, not too many of my students have said, oh, it's because, right out of the gate. It's a complicated issue. But I'm throwing it out there in the hopes that maybe somebody has an idea. The question is, if I'm finding the sum of n terms, why is t sub n got to be the last term? Well, let me explain it to you by way of an example. Let's say, and I'm, I don't think you need to write this down. In fact, I'm not sure you should write it down. Let's say that you were asked to find S25. So you have some kind of a series, right? And you want to add up the first 25 terms. And by the way, even though you're dividing by 2, it still works if it's an odd number of terms. We have changed this N to 25 which means in the equation we're going to have 25 over 2. We're going to put in the first term, whatever it is, and then this becomes t25 because n is 25. Right? If I change the n to 25 in the equation, I can't just change it to 25 someplace and not in other places. And what that changes tn to is t25. But if I'm adding up 25 terms, this has to be the last term because it's the 25th term. So here is the formula. And we'll, oh, my computer did catch up pretty quickly there. Sometimes it lags. There is the formula, but you need to recognize that formula 
as being something that where, where you look at Tn and you interpret it in a certain way, it's the last term. Tn is the last term in the series. Now I have a formula sheet that I'm going to give you because now you have, well, I'll wait because there's another formula you're going to be working with today. So in this formula, n is the number of terms, Tn is the first term, or the last term rather, T1 is the first term, and Sn is the sum of the terms. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of algebra. I could just give you the other formula, but what we have is this formula, courtesy of Leonard Euler, Sn equals n over 2 times T1 plus Tn, and we are asked to make another formula, a second formula, using this knowledge. All right, and I'm going to write that formula down over here. We also know that we can find Tn using T1 plus n minus 1 times d. And we're going to do a little bit of algebraic substitution here, and then a little while down the road, I'll explain to you why this is necessary. With algebraic substitution, what you do is you take one thing that can be written in a different way, and you substitute it into a second equation. So if I have in brackets of the equation on the left, t1 plus tn, but Tn is the same thing. These are the same. They are the same things because they're equal to each other. Then any place I see Tn, I could write this. Instead of writing Tn over here, where I've highlighted Tn on the left, I'm going to write T1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. Complicated enough, in fact, that I need to change to a second set of brackets, which I'm going to put as large square brackets. It's T1 plus this, which is T1 plus n minus 1 times d. Oh, hey, look at that. In the big set of brackets, I've got T1 plus T1. Desk plus desk equals two desks. Boring example. Sorry. Puppy plus puppy equals two puppy. Right? It means two of them. So I can write this now using Sn equals n over 2, and then 2T1 plus n minus 1 times d. And what we now have are two formulas for the sum of an arithmetic sequence. And I'm going to give you the formula sheet that we use in this course. Uh, from this day forward, this is a formula sheet that you would always have with you for quizzes, exams, including the final exam. There you go. There you go. Good catch. It's not nearly as populated, this formula sheet, as the one we use in uh, Math 30. Math 30, there's, uh, sorry, Math 30, there's a heck of a lot more material. But let me bring it up up here and show you what it is we're looking at that's of importance so far in this course. On the top left-hand side, the top of the left-hand column, there is a column that's titled Sequences and Series. It says Arithmetic, and we have now three formulas under this section. 
The first formula is your general term formula, which, and I made this point at the beginning by saying, when we have an arithmetic series that has plus in there, we still have terms. You can still use this first formula on the screen to find the third term of an arithmetic series or the third term of an arithmetic sequence. It doesn't matter. But then we have those two formulas. The reason why we have two formulas is sometimes you are expected to find the sum of a series, but you don't know the common difference. And then you can use this formula without finding the common difference. Sometimes you don't know the last term, but you do know the common difference in the first term. So it's very easy to use this formula. So let's take a look now at the examples. And you need to follow along up here. I know from experience some of you want to get ahead of yourselves, but then it's frustrating for me because later on you start asking me, well, how do you do this question? And it's a question that we've done on the board. So follow along at the same pace that we're working on stuff here. For each series, find the indicated sum. I think it's valuable to make what we call an itemized list. How many of you had uh, Mr. Hetlinger for 10C? He tends to use itemized list. Uh, how many of you had Miss Allen? Mr. Flynn, maybe? And uh, Russell. OK, I just want to see where we're at. The first term is 2. Looking at this, it's not a big leap of logic to see that the common difference is 4. As brilliant as Leonard Euler's formula is, it's only valuable if we know the last term and we don't. So what we can do instead is use this formula, Sn. Oh, by the way, n equals 12, right? Because we're trying to find S12. Sn equals n over 2 times 2n, sorry, 2t1 plus n minus 1 times d. That's the formula we're going to use. Quite frankly, what I care about here is that everybody is able to do two things. Put the numbers in. and calculate the correct answer. I don't care how you do it. Let me explain how I do it, how I do the calculation. So I put in 12 for n, I put 2 for t1, and I put 4 for d. Just to make sure we're not in any big rush here, just to make sure every place I saw t1, I put the number 2. Every place I saw D, which is only in one place, I put the number 4. And wherever I saw 12, sorry, wherever I saw N, which is in two places, I put 12. Here's how I do it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this in my head, not on a calculator. But I just go, well, this is 11. I, I'm not going to waste calculator keystrokes by going 12 minus 1 and putting it in brackets. This is 11. 11 times 4 is 44. 44 plus this 4 is 48. And then I'm going to multiply that 48 by 6. And I, I, you, know, you would do it on a calculator. Uh, but 48 times 6, I believe, is 288. Am I right? You guys do the math. I, you, know, you have to make sure you do the math. I'm just saying that's what I'm getting, but I want you to make sure that you can get it. We run the risk here, or I think students run the risk, of trying to put it all into your calculator at once. Look at the numbers. Think about what they mean. You don't have to put all the numbers in. I, I do have, it isn't a mistake. Well, it technically is. This n should be a 12, right? I'm finding S12, not Sn. So do we get 288? Okay, so S12 is 288. I want to point out something to you that there are a collection of students who typically do not like this formula. So they will use this formula in this question. 
The only problem is they don't know the last term. But you can find the last term. That's the 12th term. T1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference can be used to find T12. We're going to take 2 plus 12 minus 1 times 4. I'm not saying you have to write this down or have to do it this way, but does that work out to 46? Yes, 46. So the 12th term is 46. That means the last term is 46. Well, you get the same thing, don't you? Because 46 plus 2 is 48. We had 48 before times 6. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with the formula that will take me there the quickest. I don't like using two formulas when one will do. Let's try another one. Um, well, we already did that. B, 12 plus 7, et cetera. We want to find S14. So S14 is N over 2. I'll write out the formula again for you, even though it should be right in front of you. S14 is 14 over 2 times 2 in brackets times 12, because 12 is the first term, plus n minus 1 would be 14 minus 1 times d, which is negative 5. And I was helping a couple of people out yesterday after school and today at lunch and today this morning as well. Drives me nuts. You need a set of brackets around. You need a set of brackets around that negative 5. Uh, even, even though I know that the people I was talking to, they didn't put the brackets. They knew what to do with it anyway, but it, it should be in brackets. Um, you take a minute and work out what that is. I'll do the same thing. I'm just kind of rolling that around in my head while I'm looking for my coffee cup, so I may be wrong, but negative 287. Okay, so you get negative 287. And again, what I would say to everybody is it, what's important here is you're able to get the right answer and you're able to use the formula properly. And quite frankly, we're well beyond you looking at this and trying to figure it out in your head. How would you even figure that out in your head? You can't. You have to use the formula. And this one, well, we, we've talked about this before. If you have fractions and you have the luxury of writing the fractions in decimals so that they're reasonable decimals, do so. One quarter is 0.25. The common difference to go from one quarter to three quarters is two quarters. One cat plus two cats is three cats. One quarter plus two quarters is three quarters. Two quarters is a half. You want to find S9. I'm going to give everybody a minute or so to write down your substitution into your sum formula. N over 2 brackets 2t1 two plus brackets n minus 1 times d close all the brackets and calculate. And I'm going to calculate it as well.
I have to deal with some decimals and fractions there in my head, so I don't know. But is that yes. you're getting the same number? Okay. Were you able to get that without a calculator? Did you end up using fractions and then going back to decimals, or you multiplied the decimals on paper? I multiplied. Okay. See what I did, just so you know, is I ended up with nine over two here, and this was four point five which is 9 over 2. 9 times 9 is 81. 2 times 2 is 4. 81 over 4 is 20.25, just so you know. Because I, I get the feeling that in your old schools, you didn't rely on calculators as much as we rely on them here, which I wish we had the same system as you. Anyway, you get 20.25. Make sure you're able to get that. If you're not, I'll come around in a few minutes once we're done the lesson, and I'll help you out with your calculator to make sure you know what's going on. All right. What if we have something like find the sum here? Well, I'd like you to look at this question. And I would like you to look at the formulas on your formula sheet. And think about what the problem really is here. Like what, what's the difficulty? What's the obstacle here? What's the obstacle in preventing us from finding the sum of those terms? Yeah. You don't know like, the number of terms. Right, I don't know the number of terms. But this turns into a question that was on your quiz yesterday or questions that we've done before. Thinking of this tabularly, when n is 1, you get 5 for a term. When n is 2, you get 15. When n is 3, you get 25. If we can figure out what value of n gives 295, then we will know how many terms there are because 295 is the last term. So this turns into just a, a, a detour where we're going to use, let me write this out, detour where we're going to use this formula. to find out what n is that gives us 295. The general term is 5 plus n minus 1 times d, which is, would you agree, d is 10? Okay. So now listen carefully. Since I know that the only reason we're using this is to find out what value of n gives 295. Personally, I wouldn't multiply this 10 through first and simplify it. I wouldn't do that. You could, and then put in 295. But I think it's quicker knowing that we're not going to need the simplified form of this, which, by the way, would be tn equals 10n minus 5. That would be the simplified form. But we don't really need it. We could do it that way and then put in 295. If we did, 295 plus 5 is 300, divided by 10 is 30. Apparently this number is 30. If you do it this way, I subtract 5 from both sides and get 290. I divide both sides by 10 and get 29, and I add 1 and get 30. I mean, if you want to spend your time simplifying, it's not a waste of time. I'm saying if that is a better path for you to success, simplify it first. But now we know that this is 30, so we can use this formula. Hey, you can use the other formula too if you want, but I think this formula is easier. This is Euler's formula. Add the first and the last terms, divide by 2, and multiply by how many you have. So we're going to have S30 equals 30 over 2 times the first term plus the last term.
4,500. something like 30 divided by 2, I just change that to 15 instead of having it as a fraction. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's what I did too. I, I, I didn't say that, Owen, but definitely when I look at this and I said, I can't even remember exactly the words I said, but I probably said five, 300 times 30 over 2. What I did in my head is I said 30 over 2 is 15. So 300 times 15. That's what I did. Yeah. And, you know, you can rely on your calculator as much as you want to spend time doing that. But geez, if you if you are blindly entering, and I know this is not what you're doing, but other people might be, blindly entering 30 divided by 2, I mean, it's 15. You should know that. Um, I want to get through this entire lesson, so let's skip B and let's just go to C, because we have one more question on the next page, and then I think that will still give you about 15 minutes of time to work on some problems. The first term here is 0 0.4. The common difference is 0 0.2. You know, I'm not a calculator person. I grew up in Edmonton, but in Edmonton schools, when I went to school, we didn't have calculators. I, mean, I, think, I think in high school we were allowed calculators, but very limited use. And they didn't have the ability to do things that your calculators do. So. To me, it's obvious that we're adding 0.2 each time. But make sure you crunch those numbers in your head or otherwise and confirm the first term is 0.4, and we're adding 0.2 each time. We're adding a fifth each time. What's preventing us from finding the sum is the number of terms. But we can use this, Tn, and look carefully at what I'm doing here. I'm not writing down the formula. I'm using it right away. Tn is the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. I want to put this number here. to figure out what n is. And again, I'm choosing to put the number in now. And there's a way to find n here without resorting to multiplying that 0.2 in. It's you take the 10, you subtract the 0.4, then you divide by 0.2, and that will give you n minus 1, and then you can add the 1. When I divide by point, when I subtract the point 0.4, rather, I get 9.6. When I divide by point 0.2, I get 48, but I'm going to want confirmation on that. Yeah. Good. Oh, well, that means n is 49, because I have to, I, one more step here, I have to add 1 to both sides. Listen, even though we know the common difference, I personally would much rather use this formula that's in the middle of these three. It, it's just less work, less complicated. I just add the first and the last terms, because I know them both, and I multiply by whatever 49 over 2 is. So S49 is 49 over 2 times the first term, which was 0.4, plus the last term, which is 10. Can't do that one in my head. I could, but I would get the wrong answer, probably, because I'm under pressure right now with everybody looking at me. Yeah. Uh, 254.8. Anybody else in agreement? Okay, thank you. So 254.8. By the way, before we finish this lesson off with one more problem,